You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast <coughs> Club. We have some special guests in the building. First, we have Claudia Jordan, friend to the show. See, murder. Hey. And now we have uh, <laughs> some other special guests. We have Eric Garner's mom, Miss Gwen Carr. Thank you. Good and morning. And we have Tamir Rice's mom, Samaria Rice. Good, Good morning. morning. Welcome, guys. How Thanks are y'all? Thank you. Thank you so okay. much for having us. Now so, let's talk about this film, yeah. Jason's Letter. What's what's Jason's letter about that that you're in? Oh, that's why they together. I thought they had a new group or something. An R&B <laughs> you know what? Oh, R&B I thought y'all was gonna right. be the new R&B trio out here. <laughs> so yeah, for uh, mm-hmm. it's based on a letter that a, a boy wrote. His solution to the police killings that's been happening, and a, a young boy thought that segregation would be the way to to do it. Like basically, white cops have no place in black communities because they just don't know how to police us mm. because everybody's a threat. They don't know how to handle us. So. Um, Terrence Hakeem, our director, producer right here, uh, he wrote it. And um, powerful scenes. I play a mom who lost my son. So these two ladies came in and we have a scene where they're consoling and giving their, you know, ex- sharing their experiences. So it's really, it's deep. Mm-hmm. It's it's relevant. It's what's going on right now. Unfortunately, it just keeps on happening every single week, mm-hmm. it seems like. I, I've always felt that way. Like we need to encourage more people in our community to be part of law enforcement. Go be judges, you know, go be lawyers, go mm-hmm. be police officers. Because we've always been screaming F the police yeah. for so long. So it makes us not even want to be a part of the system. But it's just not even, yeah, like you said, it's not even the, just the police, though, the system. And mm-hmm. then all the, the the judges that this administration's put in place right now, like they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're recruiting like white supremacist type judges that are that are making it difficult to even challenge the system. Mm-hmm. So Jason's letter is an actual letter <laughs> that was written in real life mm-hmm. from a real... Young man. Yeah. It was from a 12 year old boy um, outside of Ferguson that wrote the letter to his city council to um, uh, find a solution to end police brutality, like Miss Claudia said. And it's a very powerful film. I encourage everybody to um, go see it and um, support it. Um, it's a shame that it's a 12 year old child that had to step up and be the one to step up and bring this to the light for everybody and everybody know that my son was 12 years old when he was murdered mm-hmm. so this film is very touchy to me i met a lot of the cast members in it and developed some relationships um it's a good film and i'm honored to be on it absolutely now miss Carl, you got into into uh the blasio's ass the other day <laughs> and you know every time i see that video it just hurts so much you know mm-hmm. I, I see it all the time so w- what happened with that instant well, um, you're talking about the de Blasio incident? Yes, man. Well, I'm just, I just got sick and tired of the politics. This is my son's life. Mm-hmm. He lost his life. Now, we as his family, we have to live this every day. Um, we die a little bit every day. Mm. Be- and then when there's no justice, no closure, it just continue to to work on the wound that, that ne- never closes. Mm-hmm. And so I just wanted to confront him by saying, what are you going to do about it? When they, he's saying that he's going to, um, you know, just bring charges on two of the police officers, there was at least six of the police officers who was involved in my son's death that day. And I want all of them to stand accountable for my son's death, yeah, right. not just two mm-hmm. police officers. Don't throw me a bone. Like they, throw, they say, oh, yes. you charge two and like everybody's going to appease everybody. Uh, no, no. And then charging means nothing nowadays. It doesn't right. mean anything. I mean, anything. like, we still have a long way to go That's, after that. Exactly. So, I mean, let's get the ball rolling right at first, mm-hmm. and then let's continue on. Because everyone is asking me, well, how do you feel about this? I don't feel any way till I see that something is done. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Seeing is believing. All this rhetoric in the papers, I'm not even falling for it. Are you numb now to, to them playing the video over and over again? Well, see, I don't watch the picture? it. Okay. I don't watch it. I have never watched it in its entirety from the very beginning. When I first seen it, the very first time I seen it, the day after my son's death, I just went ballistic, you know. So I, my husband just said, turn it off, turn it off. She can't look at this. So every time it would come on, I had start looking at the news because, you know, they were playing it over and over again. Yeah. And it was like a nightmare, a reoccurring nightmare. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What about you, Samara? Well, for me, that is the last video that I will ever see of my son. So it's definitely bothersome mm-hmm. when um, it has to be shown over and over again. I just mm-hmm. recently found out that uh, Frank Grombeck, his sentence was cut um, instead of 10 days he only did five days of a suspension and I'm just not understanding how the um, 
city of Cleveland failed to uh, be transparent with me about that. Mm. I mean, you had a 10-day suspension, but you filed a, a appeal to have it cut in half, so he only served five days. And Timothy Lowman, from my understanding, he's the trigger man. He is um, fired, but I'm hearing that going through the arbitration process, um, he may be able to get his job back. So wow. that's wow. why so I So they do um, something immediate to try to appease you and yes. then, mm-hmm. when, when yes. they think it's over. Yes. That's the games so, they play. Do these so. officers ever reach out and just apologize? No. No, why would they? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, those particular officers? No. no. I mean, the police in my community, they've been super nice to me. Yeah. You know, I can't. They've been super nice, but the actual officers, I've heard nothing except for this uh, letter of apology supposed to have been when there was no indictment and whatever, and we know that was a bunch of crap. Mm-hmm. That police officer probably never seen that letter, probably was signed by, his, by the secretary in the NYPD. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can't just throw me a bone and think that I'm just going to go after it. No, I always analyze everything that's done. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Like, how do you, like, your job is to protect and serve, right? And then you are out here killing citizens with no mm-hmm. weapons. And then you don't even have that in your heart to reach right. out to mm-hmm. the people that you're killing. That's right. No. Not even like, oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 it was a mistake. Oh, Nothing. no. I actually seen uh, Timothy Loma and Frank Graham back in my mini, uh, my litigation and they actually had smiles on their face, and wow. I had to kind of remove mm, myself wow. from the room because mm-hmm. um, that was like a real painful day for me mm-hmm. um, going in there to actually see them for the very, very first time and to have that smirk on their face like they hadn't did nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. So they had to remove they had to remove me from the from the um, litigation room. Before you curse somebody out, put hands <laughs> no, on somebody. I was going to put my hands on, around his neck. Oh, That's Ms. what I was going to do. Samari doesn't play <laughs> at all. I've I learned, learned that about her. I put my hands around his neck <laughs> and just squeeze the life. She's not but, joking. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you, um, is it hard, to, like when y'all do films and stuff like this, is it hard to like relive that moment over and over? All the time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in the film, it was like a little bit of, consoling because it was like we were consoling another mother Mm -hmm. and this is what we do in real life life. we have different organizations where we bring mothers together from all around the nation mothers that no one has even heard of before they Mm -hmm. didn't get one line in the papers but we reach out to them even though we are hope high profile, but every mother's pain is the same. That's a so, sad yeah. sorority yes. of women. Yes. You can feel it's it so too. Sad. Like yes. I've, 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 you know, I've met y'all two today, and I've met Trayvon's mother and um, Michael Brown's mother, and it's like the same type of energy. Like you can feel that that pain coming from them. Yeah. yeah. Now, can I ask you in the movie um, for Jason's letter? His solution is to have the white cops in the white neighborhoods, right, and the black cops in the black neighborhoods. What do you think are some solutions moving forward? What things can we do to at least improve? Well, I want to say one thing. I think all police officers don't need to be police officers straight out of um, high school. They need some college background training, um, schooling to be an officer because coming straight out of high school ain't going to get it when you have to go in these different type of communities that you know nothing about. So I suggest that they get some college, like whoever is in charge of making the police thing up, they need to add that in there. You have to have a college degree to be a police officer. Okay. I think that would help. Well, I think it would help if the police officers knew their community mm-hmm. that they were policing. I don't think that these police officers should be just riding around in their vehicles. I think they should walk the beat. Like years ago, that's what they did. They mm, walked the true, beat. Yep. They mm. let people know who they knew who the people were in the area and the people knew who they were. And even in the schoolyards, like when I was going to school, they had like one police officer. We didn't have all this these guards like they have now. He had one police officer. He was a uh, a white police officer, but his name was Blackie. <laughs> <laughs> Why they call him Blackie? That was his name. Black okay. was his name. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, and he would, what he would do, I never known him to really harass kids, but if he see them cutting class, he would chase them, chase them back in school mm-hmm. and things like that. And, or if he seen you doing something, he would, you know, like he 
tell the principal, you know, tell their mother come up. I seen him smoking. They would just smoke and say they were smoking over there in the handball court. Right. Things like that they would do. Because but, he was familiar with them. Yes. So he could just know their mom and know them by name. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think we need to go back to that. Right. That's, that makes and, a lot of sense. And on top of that, they do have to, the, the system has to stop penalizing some of its own because if they don't, it's just going to keep on continuing to make mm-hmm. these right. pe- people feel they have carte blanche to keep mm-hmm. on doing the same thing. Why would they be discouraged and not do it if mm-hmm. no one ever gets Nothing in trouble? Nothing happens. Like, well, I'm we a, would get like one conviction, I think, maybe? You can't be part of the law and be above the law. That's right. right. Absolutely. And they're exactly. abusing it. They're using that's it. just what it is. They hide behind that 50A law that protects the police officer. We need to get rid of that. It needs to be dismantled, mm-hmm. yes. destroyed. Mm-hmm. I always felt like police officers should have to do mandatory community service. Like, that should be part of the hours that they put in. Yeah, they instead have to- of 10 hours of community service, they got, what, 50 hours of firearm training. It needs to, the numbers need to be reversed. You don't need 50 hours of firearm training, especially when you have some of these officers that's coming out of the military. You don't need that. Right. You need 50 hours of community training, whatever is involved in that situation, getting to know the community, being out there, um, just making the community safe because right. these kids mm-hmm. are scared. I mean, you're right. talking about in Cleveland, Ohio, where the little boy was just mowing his lawn, and D.O. Hughley spoke about it, and the lady called. Okay, and this was like her 50th call. So we have to take responsibility for our own as well. But also the police need to get out there and know their community. How are they they doing 50 hours of firearm training and still shooting the wrong people? I don't know. Well, they all know they're not shooting the right, the wrong people. They're shooting who they (laughs) want to shoot. Who they intend to shoot. shoot. Yeah. Yeah, But like you said, they need to start doing the basketball camps and having the cops coach the camps again and and start doing Mm -hmm. like, I think what you said is perfect. Mm -hmm. Put more cops on the beat. Yeah. Walk around, see the smell neighbors. the air, smell man. Right. Yeah, know? they got to know the and community. Eat the food from the neighborhood. Every no interaction doesn't have to be something that is, uh, you know, something that's hostile. Exactly. And if you knew the people in the area, if you knew the parents, see, you could help each other. The police can help you, and you could help the police. Now, because. In our neighborhoods, we do not want the criminals walking around in our neighborhoods right. who may rob us, steal our grandmother's purse and whatnot. We would tell the police, hey, get him, you know, he's always lurking behind old ladies or he's always, right. you know, behind little kids. We would tell them, mm-hmm. you know, get him out of our neighborhood. We don't want those type of people in our neighborhood. So we should be able to help each other. How did you help Claudia for this role? Um, well, we <laughs> was consoling her. Yeah. Uh, I was on one side of her and I'm telling her, you know, how to be strong. Um, Samaria's on the other side. She's giving her advice, and we're just rubbing her and consoling her. It was powerful because, of course, like, y'all know, anyone that follows me, and we're all friends, like, we're all very invested in these type of things. Like, we're all very vocal about this on social media. And I already, like, before I knew them, I knew them, Mm -hmm. their stories. And I've already cried to your stories and and seen your pain. So just, like, preparing myself to just be, like, just try to imagine where you guys are coming from. Mm -hmm. And just, and that scene, like, I was, like, really crying and really, like, I felt heartbroken. Like, I'm sure not as much as you, but just, like, your essence and just you guys being there just made it, I don't know, it was was difficult, but it was also, like, liberating in a way to just Mm. be around them. You see people on TV and, okay, another one, another one. But to be in the room with two moms whose stories were so important and so like such, like just all over the media and just hearing what you guys had to say and you were upset but you were also still being strong in the scene so i encourage everybody to go see jason's letter it's really hard to get these movies done mm-hmm. i will tell you right yeah. that's why we have to support if we make a ratchet ass movie right mm-hmm. about just some nonsense money all day long comes in to promote it Everybody and Terrence can tell you it. like it's difficult to get the money to promote it mm-hmm. to make them yes. and and dealing with the networks and dealing with these companies they don't want to hear it because they're all in bed with each other these corp- corporations mm-hmm. they're not trying to shed a light on you know these type of things systematic sure. racism sure. mm-hmm. so to get these done like these independent filmmakers like kudos to them it's really tough to get these stories out there well let's make sure it's on stars on September 1st September yeah. 1st so I want, September 1st I want to ask Myron Gwynn do y'all get invested in the the other stories, like when you hear, you know, the Trayvons and Mike Browns, do y'all get invested in those, or is it hard because y'all got so much yeah, of y'all own? I, sometimes. Yeah, well, you know what? It yeah. depends on what moves you because you keep hearing stories. Sometimes it just brings back the past, and maybe that day you can't do anything about it because it brings back your past. Mm-hmm. But afterwards, you know, after you console yourself, then you go and you get involved. I try to get involved, especially in my area, 
when I hear about something, I try to go to the parents and, you know, if it's nothing but, you know, yeah. saying that I'm here for support, mm -hmm. you know, I don't even say I'm sorry because they hear that so much. Mm -hmm. You have my condolence. You have hear that so much. Mm -hmm. I tell them, you know, you have my love. You, you know, you have my support mm -hmm. because, you know, this is what we have to do with mothers. Uh, this is an exclusive club that we don't want anyone else to be a part mm -hmm. of. And because the membership is too high. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's real. Do, you know? Does it make mm -hmm. you not, well, it's probably an obvious question, like if something, if you see something happening, are you hesitant to call the police yourselves? Like, do you not, is there like a district, there's no trust there? And I feel well, like in our community, we're taught really, not to call the police right. anyway. I don't like, deal uh -huh. with no police unless I have to. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's just, it's, it's, I don't want to deal with them. I mean, even though a lot of them, um, you know, say, you know, they're sorry and they, if it was me that day, your son would still be alive. But I just try not to deal with him because it's such a bad reputation with mm -hmm. him. Unless I really have to call him for something, I really That's try a good not. Question. I yeah. really try not to deal with him because if you call him, it could end up deadly. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Which so it, it, it could yeah. be, but um, really, on in some instances, we need the police. And then there's other instances <laughs> like where. Now. We can de if we can de escalate a situation that's going on. We should try that first. We need well, good back, police. What about back in the day when we, when we were police we could, ourselves? Yeah, you we know? need uh -huh. the police yeah, ourselves. You know, I, I would feel like better this, with that one. When we were police uh -huh. ourselves, yeah. Yeah. Black our own, back. Yeah. yeah, where our own community yeah. was. Safe, yes, you know? and that's what it needs to go back to too. Police yeah. yourself, but sometimes you may get in a situation where you have to call the police. Now we know yeah. that can happen. That can so happen. you can't ever say that. Oh, I will never call the police again. No, you can't make a. a empty statement like that because we never know what kind of situation it's always the we'll last resort for us though, it, uh, right? yes, uh -huh. anything else uh -huh. I could do I do not want to have to right no I don't want to call right. them on any if I see a fight downstairs I do not want to call them on that because we don't know what's going to mm -hmm. happen right. with that you yeah. know but if someone is endangering me or my children or someone I could see a neighbor maybe somebody trying to break in their house or right. something like that now I think we do need to call the police on yeah. 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 Like because that. it's so uh -huh. they're so needed right yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. in, in uh -huh. circumstances like that but then uh -huh. you're afraid because like you see how something like a, a, a theft could, could turn to a murder uh -huh. Absolutely. and then sometimes yeah. we have mentally ill people that uh -huh. they kill also I know I had uh, the, the guy who lived next door to me he was um experienced some mental ill issues and he, well his mother called the cop because the mother was afraid but then the cops they came to the door and they was not they were saying well let me in let me in and he was saying no no y'all killed my friend eric gardner i'm not letting you in the cops they just looked at each other I and they were saying, that's right. <laughs> and wow. then you know wow. he he they kept knocking they said no we just we, we just want to talk to you and but you know finally now being he said that you know when he did, when his mother did get in there and he came and he did come out peacefully and the cops took him gently, you know, the way he said, y'all killed my friend Eric Gardner. Right. And um, that probably resonated with right. him. Oh, wow. You know. Absolutely. But, it, but you know what? The bad thing about calling the cops sometimes, too, is it brings anxiety. You're hearing all this as a kid mm -hmm. and as a teen. So mm -hmm. the first thing when you see a cop, you're scared. It's yeah. not, it's, mm -hmm. You don't even have to be doing anything. You're right. just scared for That's your so life. So just like in the Antoine Rose's um, situation, and I was just up there supporting his mom and just letting her know I'm here for her, um, you know, to support you, to guide you through this proce process or whatever, you know, and that's sometimes what other mothers need to be guided through the process right. from what a uh, previous mom have already went through. And it was actually his 18th birthday, so I was happy to be there. Yeah. Did you yeah. ever talk to the uh, people who called the police on your son? So, no, it was a, a drunk man in the park, mm. um, and I never had a chance to talk to him. I think the uh, police kind of purposely kept us apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, pr probably purposely kept right, us apart because right, right. I never even uh, seen him, talked to him. I just heard his voice on the tape. That's about it. Oh, no, he's a dumbass, Phil. Yeah. So the drunk mm -hmm. man in the park called the police on oh, my a son. child playing yeah. with a toy gun and a right, right. to carry state. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. he, and he said it was a toy gun, so the breakdown was between the dispatch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. the officer. But Like yeah, he said, I so think it's tragic. a toy gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of the solutions yeah. are, a lot of uh, impressive solutions are in the letter that is written in Jason's letter that yes. that's read and Vivica Fox in the movie as well, Quint Aaron. I, I do got one more question. Why is it that it seems like the, the, the mothers are always the main ones that society sees trying to avenge the death of their sons? Like, y'all always on the front lines more than the, the guys. I mean, black women are always on the front more lines more than the, than the guys. Father. That's but, I mean, I don't know. We, I can't even say. I, I think because, okay, 
it's the mom and the dad's child. But our children laid under our heartbeat for nine months. Mm. So they are part of us, even though they're grown, if they're, you know, whatever. We can feel their pain. Although the, the father tried to make the sons out of tough guys. Oh, he fell down. Oh, get up. That don't needs that Don't cry. You know, but we will kiss the wound and say it's going to be better. So we just embrace our children to no end and we love them and we don't care what who they are we gonna love our children and some Uh of the fathers are sick you know they can't really handle um this you know what i'm saying it takes a strong woman woman. Mm -hmm. to handle this it takes a strong woman to handle this um some of the some of the dads you know they're just not equipped mm. to handle but we it. have some dads out there you yeah, know some like of them. sean bell's dad he was out there before sure the mother was, was out yeah. there you know because even miss bell well she's going to be there um in philly uh tomorrow also but even uh she said at first she was too heartbroken to mm. get out there but mm. his, his dad took charge immediately mm-hmm. and he got out there. and john crawford's mm-hmm. father he's mm-hmm. um you know, he speaks very well and out in the open as well. But unfortunately, so, in our country, like they they see a, a, a black man that's angry, rightfully mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. It's almost yeah. they're th- they feel threatened they once feel, again. Uh-huh, like it's right. like probably they best feel. that you guys are from because they see how they are. Yeah. They can't take any bass yeah. in one's voice or any testosterone coming from yeah, black right. men. They, so, they yeah, right. It's a threat. They what threaten. I notice about white America is that um, they don't never want to be wrong, and they always want to be right when they're always wrong. Mm-hmm. And it's their pride. <laughs> that keeps them thinking that they're above level, above everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I have been experiencing that lately, right. you know. That's real. And yeah. it's terrible. Yes. Well, thank you, ladies, for joining us. Thank Jason's you. Letter. Jason's September Letter. September 1st on Stars, and we appreciate you. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Yes. Carr. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Rice.